you know, someone might pick up the book and say, oh, we're going to we're going to work a, uh, an entire study on irony in the Bible. And they might wonder, you know, how much material there there would be or how engaging this might be. But it's tremendous. when Once the door has been opened, you start to see the use of this throughout all the pages of Scripture. This is a very common literary device that the Lord uses, but I, I hesitate a bit to say literary device because it's not just the stories, the way that they're told, uh, describing irony, but in fact, God has ordained history to work out this way, and then we see it recorded and revealed to us in these fa- in this fashion. That's right. I mean, yeah. this is a divine design of history, that and, and these two strands are crucial to that divine design. I mean, even you get Romans 5, the first Adam is a tupos, a type of the one to come. Well, how is that? Well, uh, the first Adam um, uh, was a representative sinner and all sinned uh, in him, and then he was punished. But that representative sin and punishment uh, that was representative pointed, Paul says, to the opposite in Christ, which is amazing. So that's a beautiful yeah. example of an action mm-hmm. that God designed to point to its opposite. Precisely. And it really kind of mitigates against any sort of evolutionary or deistic notion of the world, because if everything just unfolded exactly as we'd expect, or if God just winded up the clock of the world and let it go to run, you would not see these ironies. You would not be surprised. Everything would just proceed according to you know expectations and probabilities. But here we see God's hand at work over time and time again. And another thing that you do in this book is not only weave in all the stories of Scripture here, but demonstrate how even in in culture and in literature, non-inspired literature, you know, stories like the Prince and the Pauper, other myths and legends, we we start to see how common this is as as us being made in the image of God and and knowing God's voice and truth. We see echoes of the same thing even in the stories that we tell among one another. Yeah, yeah, uh, very, very very true. Yeah. Um, I, I try to bring some of those, um, some of those stories out, you know, I mean, w- one of them, a very sad, uh, uh, very sad song that, that, that I, I, I mentioned, I think it's called Cats in the Cradle. I oh, think. sure. The Cat Stevens song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he, the song's about, you know, the early life of his son and how he didn't spend any time with his son. His son wanted him to, he said, oh, I, I just don't have time now, but, but we'll do it later. And then he gets old and wants to spend time with the son. And since says, oh, I don't have time, we'll do it later. Well, he's punished by means of his own sin. Yeah. And, uh, see, it's just w- woven everywhere into the fabric of human living. 